Hey guys, how we doing? So, back on another Mother's Basement What's In An OP video. And this one, you guys told me to leave for a while because apparently, like, the way he talks about this, there were spoilers at the time. But now there's a new OP, <laughs> and I'm up to date with my academia. Someone's told me, hey, you can watch this now. So, I'm going to. And uh, I loved this OP. Um, I thought the music was amazing. I thought the song was great. And I don't get why people hate this OP. I mean, you're probably comparing it to the other ones, but in my opinion, this is like... I don't know, there was just something really epic about it. And like, people seem to go on about how the music doesn't match the feel of the of the stuff that's going on in the OP. And I'm just like, are you kidding? Like, I feel like the, the way that it's not perfectly timed, like you would normally expect it to, just adds to it and it just... Anyway, I don't know really how... To, I'm no good at explaining these things. Hopefully, uh, Mother's Basement's going to touch on this. Because um, he, he explains things a lot better than I do. God, I wish I was better with words. Anyway, let's get into this. My Hero Academia's best opening yet. What's an OP? Season 3. I try to avoid talking about music since it's not my thing, but the new right. theme song for Hero Academia Season 3, Odd Future by Uverworld, is interesting to say the least. Oh, okay. Where previous Hero Aka openings were hard rock, this one is a bit more hip-hop fusion. Oh, and with it. that shift in styles comes a shift in pacing. To some, the OP feels a bit out of sync, like the music doesn't match the escalation of the oh, okay, here we go. The drop where the beat gets faster and the instrument's more intense comes in really late in the song, only ah. 10 seconds before the title card, and a lot of the action isn't accompanied by what you'd think of as action music. Mm -hmm. This has led mm -hmm. to complaints, and even a meme built around pairing the OP yeah, with People have been doing all those music with the other one. Better, but I'm gonna defend this one. Uh, yeah, I go really on. Really like Odd Future. Yes. I think it matches the action perfectly. I do. Just in a different way from your typical J-Rock opener. Instead of getting faster with the action, the beat gets heavier. The key to this OP is the explosive bass drop, which you're not going to hear if you're listening to it on your phone or tablet or crappy TV speakers or in the background of a YouTube video. Yeah. But if you're like me and Pulsing you have a subwoofer off. hooked up to everything you watch anime on this song will grow on you fast i love this this tune stays in my head now with that little bit of opinion out of the way how does the actual op hold up is it as packed with sakuga references and foreshadowing as its predecessor sora ni Taiba? or dare to dream does it once again go beyond plus ultra plus could ultra. this be the new best hero aka opening Yes. I love Sorry, it. I'm way too excited to be a tease about this. Yes. <laughs> this OP is awesome. It's amazing, I just it? want to talk about why. Why involves talking about a lot of manga spoilers up to around episode 12 of this season, though, so if you're an anime-only cool. fan, I'm up to date. It's fine. continue at your own <laughs> risk. Now, the OP starts with a zoom out of Deku's eye as he crouches down, getting yes. ready to break into a sprint. We see a spotlight on him. Only natural, considering that he's, he's the, the main center character. of our attention as our protagonist, and yes. also the center of the world's attention as the future symbol of peace, and in a flash, that spotlight is replaced by projected images of his past yes. struggles, from finding out that he was quirkless all the way up through to... his battle with yep. Stain. <laughs> Lastly, Amazing. we see him dashing out of the Academy training grounds with Bakugo, a shot straight from the last season finale. Then we pull down and around behind him so as he breaks into so a run, leaving a trail of dust and broken earth here. in his wake. The camera moving downward shows his growth as a character, going from being weak and insignificant to a powerful, dominant figure who we have to look up to. Damn if right. you've seen my previous videos about Hero Aka, uh -huh. you know that the series has been gradually building up a narrative in the beginning and ending of its openings Definitely. about Deku's relationship with it has, yeah. Across three OPs, Deku goes from staring at All Might's back from afar to being acknowledged by his hero as an equal. And now, in the fourth OP, we see him in the same barren desert set as the last one, only this time he's all alone yeah, except and... for Toru. <laughs> I, love it. I was waiting for that, something like Might, that. And now he needs to learn how to move forward without I love, his hero. I love how people him, think he's being real with that as well. This story arc is ultimately going to leave him. And mm. this OP spends a lot of its runtime reinforcing that idea. The very next shot shows a oh, young man. All Might accepting his quirk, one for all, from his mentor, Nana Shimura, with a 3D rotation of the camera representing this turning point for them. This the passing, passing of the torch. Yeah. The rotating camera is a consistent motif throughout this OP. There are four <laughs> rotating shots in the opening, and all of them focus on either All Might or, or Deku. Deku yeah. Every time the camera moves in this way, it shows the transition of One for All's power between them. 
And that's not the only visual motif in this OP. There's also an extreme focus on eyes, and not just with the obvious oh, okay. zooms in and out of Deku's eyes that begin and end this opening sequence. There are a lot of cuts to oh, God, and away yeah. from close-ups on various yeah. characters' eyes, which represent the willpower of these heroes and villains oh, yeah, to constantly forward. just like, I will Note succeed. when <laughs> Deku is at his lowest here, we don't see his eyes, but we do when he regains his will to fight. Yeah. The same Confidence goes back, for boom, look at me. in these shots. And there are two characters whose eyes we don't see at all. All for one, who is blind and on his last legs, and Nana Shimura, who is, who is dead. dead yeah. And then there's All Might, whose powers are reaching their limit. We only see the glint of his eyes one time He's during going. the final oh, confrontation ow. with All for One, oh. which is his last moment acting as a hero. Yeah, to hammer amazing. that home just a little bit harder, we jump from All Might with his mentor to All Might with his protege. Yeah. Yes. Sitting on a bench under a blossom generation cherry to generation. tree. It's a nice, uplifting, happy image. It which is, is look weird that. because it's clearly based on a decidedly somber manga. Oh! Film. Chapter 96 wow. of the manga opens with a color splash page featuring Deku and a deflated All Might That's sitting cool. somberly on a park bench under a more green tree next to each other. The page marks a farewell to the symbol of peace who loses his powers after. Uh, well, we'll get to that. The That's pink cool. sakura blossoms are associated with spring in Japan, while green leaves are more associated with summer, so mm. the shot in the OP is clearly a before picture to the manga covers after. after. That's amazing. I wouldn't amazing. be surprised in the slightest if, in the last episode of this core, they changed the OP to replace the shot with that cover. But that's enough mm. about Deku and All Might for now. We jump from them to the rest of Class, oh, class 1A, 1A out for a run in their gym uniforms. For the most part, the kids are just running, but Aoyama, true to his narcissistic character, stares directly into the, the camera, camera the whole time. Yeah. And we see an exhausted He's Mineta so turn and start drooling when the girls catch up with yep. them. Also, <laughs> hey, there's to Oh, wait. Toru's actually in this <laughs> shot. I don't know how to... Uh, let's just move on. After we meet the kids, we're introduced to the adult. I can't wait for him to do the next OP where she's just like posing with the gloves at the end. Right up in front of the camera and standing apart from everyone else. This is the first of four times that a shot transition in this OP is marked by flames. A third motif, which I believe is meant to hint that Endeavor will take All Might's place yeah. after he loses one for all. Well, that at makes any sense. Rate, the number two. From him to the other pro heroes. This is a very dynamic shot with such a cool way of putting Mountain Girl ball, in it as well, isn't it? Jumping in to strike a pose, then Gran Torino sliding into place as Mount Lady embiggens herself so to cool. fill out the top part of the frame. We don't learn well a framed, lot though. about the individual characters from this, but we can instantly tell who actually works at UA yeah, yeah, yeah. because they all stand Standing in front outside. of the school while everyone else has to move into position. The heroes do strongly contrast with the villains, though, who are introduced by Dabby's blue flame Dabby. instead of in Dabby on the red, <laughs> and who take up a more intimidating position much closer well, from to the screen. Taku, I'm sorry. And while the heroes were all looking in the same direction, this is Dabby on the haters. by a common purpose of protecting the peace, Close the right. League of Villains Vanguard Action Squad is looking all over the place because they all have different ideals and yeah, yeah, yeah they're not all like, and like, on the same page completely left they? because they're both loyal to Shigaraki and follow his ideals Dobby and Spinner are looking to the right meanwhile because they're both followers Stain. of the hero killer Stain yeah. and want to create the better world that he envisioned in direct opposition though they don't know it yet to Shigaraki also as a neat little aside Mr. Compress is holding the shrunken Bakugo in his hand the guy in the cloak and mask muscular, muscular is looking yeah. directly at the screen because all he wants is chaos yeah Likewise, that's true he doesn't Shiniko really Toka care about is either of those things does he just wants to watch the world burn and she looks directly into the camera when she pops up as well but she Cutie. does a little bit more than that she smiles at us as she yep. toys with her needle in an unmistakably flirty manner then she throws it directly the at the camera yeah. which isn't just a clever and beautifully animated way of cutting to the next shot it also tells us who she's looking at. The camera in all three of these shots represents 
Deku's perspective. That's why he's not running with his classmates and why Aoyama is looking at him, although that comes way later, why the camera frames the pro heroes in such a reverential light, and why the villains look so intimidating by comparison. It's also why Toga flirts with the camera. During the summer training arc, she becomes yeah. obsessed with Deku and starts stalking him relentlessly. Right. And in light of that, it makes sense for Muscular to be staring looking at the camera because he wants Deku to fight him as yeah. well, since they fight each other one on one. When oh, well, okay, that's an attack. interesting way of looking at it. Yeah, okay. I like that. Garaki slumped against the screen, and we see a hand reach out of the screen to pat him on his head. That hand is all, all for, for one. one yeah. All Might's nemesis and Shigaraki's mentor. Yes. This image either represents Shigaraki the twist during the hideout raid is cool arc as well. when he thinks it. that all hope is lost before his mentor uses nope, teleportation it's okay. to save the League of Villains from the clutches of justice, or it could represent the aftermath of that arc when Shigaraki is left alone and his mentor is carted off. To jail. Yeah. Since All for One's influence is still with him, now oh, yeah, he's gee, I love it. It's such an evil thing own, to do. Much like Deku at the beginning of this I may have lost, Speaking of, but I have still won. Uh, our hero, only to see him limping sadly through the snow. And shortly after, we see what he's sad about, as Bakugo appears behind him, and he turns gray, hanging his head to the feet. At first glance, this seems to be a simple character introduction, since the characters hate each other, but Bakugo is notably not in front of the same canyon background as all of the other action shots use and that's because at the end of the training camp arc bakugo gets kidnapped, kidnapped yeah. by the league of villains who hope to turn him to their side so bakugo's cool. angry explosive attack isn't just for show then it's a response to that proposal mm -hmm. since like, he's nope. not exactly big on the whole villainy thing nope. despite his i love that i was like there's no way After he's gonna bakugo, go we see ida and kirishima engaging in battle which is significant is because they along with deku are the Charge just like Deku did for different reasons. From the villains, while All Might is busy battling all for one. And with their help, the despondent Deku reclaims his resolve and gets ready to fight. Coming Rah. in with that base drop, All Might do, flies do, down do, to deliver do, do, a do, do, devastating do. punch Love to the it. center of the Boom. city. This is him charging in to fight all for one, one last time. Then we cut back to Shigaraki walking forward purposefully in front of a creepy, grasping horde of Nomus. Yeah. He is now moving forward on his own. Own, truly leading the league does look a little bit more confident and he's like i shall do this and then. leaving his defeated mentor behind which is exactly what all for one wants yeah, to let shigaraki's hatred fuel him to achieve even greater levels of villainy now that his mentor is gone after that we jump back to the training camp with arc all might knowing all who he is as well it's like jumping oof. out of an explosion in the woods giving everyone a chance to let their power Here we shine go. Literally, in Aoyama's case, there are a few <laughs> points of interest here. Firstly, it's worth noting that Tetsu 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 is mixed in with Class A in place of Kirishima, and he does play a key role in taking down one of the villains. He does, doesn't Secondly, he? Secondly, uh, it's that significant is that the explosion starts with an immense burst of power from Dark Shadow, who oh, goes yeah. out of control when that's the a bit, yeah. attack during this arc. And for the most so it shows part, everything that's, that's about to happen in the season, I suppose, doesn't it? It's just a it crazy all. burst of action show the chaos created by the villains attacking. But even if it's just for a few frames, every character gets a chance to show off their really unique do, designs it's and amazing. personalities. We see Todoroki break away from the chaos and fly above it on his ice, readying a blast of flames. And I guess he's too important to not get his own character shot at yeah. this point, but he it's a bit out of place considering that he doesn't really accomplish much during he doesn't either do training anything in this or season, the hideout raid. Still, his so flames anyway. serve as a cool transition to Deku as he powers up and gets ready to throw down <laughs> muscular. This is a beautifully animated sequence that really sells Deku's desperation and power, as well as muscular's Muscular. insane, overwhelming strength, which dominates every frame he's in. You get an instant sense of the David and Goliath totally nature of this fight from just pros, looking at the two side himself. by side. The rotation around Deku tells us that this is a key moment for him. This is his first time fighting as a real hero, yeah, giving it, his all like to defend someone he has doesn't to save. No. Thus, it the is a huge name? step toward realizing his destiny as All Might's eventual successor. That idea is reinforced as he goes in for the knockout blow. And just before he lands his 1 million percent Delaware Bye -bye. Detroit Smash. We zoom into <laughs> Deku's eye and see what's inspiring him. The ferocious fighting spirit of, of All Might. Conveniently, this also serves as an ex 
excuse to highlight the final battle between All Might and All for One. From behind the villain, we see All Might crackling with energy, ready to release every last ounce of One for All in his final attack, United States of Smash, yes. which is the coolest attack name ever. Just you know the side. We then zoom in across the battlefield to All Might and see his face twisted, not in his iconic smile or even a serious grimace, but rather pure, unrestrained rage. For the first time in the whole series, we are seeing All Might get truly mad. Yeah, and combined with the tempo of the music finally speeding up, it is a badass moment. And if the significance of that is lost on you, the importance of this moment is further emphasized by another camera turn, mirroring the one that we just saw mm, around Deku, yeah. Deku's face. He is finally passing the torch to Deku, just as Nana passed it to him so many years ago. Amazing. We see a quick montage of Eraserhead, Edgeshot, Best Genus, Mount Lady, Tommy Woods, and Endeavor using their powers to fight Nomus during the hideout raid arc. Each of them collectively inspires Deku, who at last unleashes his power on Muscular, breaking through the screen to bring us to the title cool. card, which appears in color negative for a moment, perhaps representing All For One's evil, before a flash of lightning wipes it away to leave us with a shining, heroic symbol. Or maybe the graphic designers just thought the effect looked cool. cool. I don't know. <laughs> After the title card, we see one last shot of Deku rising up from the ground, growing in power and stature before our eyes, and until he's standing he stands in front of with All Might yeah. behind him, which is really significant. In all of the other OPs, yeah. Deku was constantly chasing behind him. his hero. But now in he's this in one, front. he doesn't actually look at, him, look at him yeah. once. He's like, this look, is a it's... badass image to end on, with some very impressive so cool. animation as Deku stands up, but again, I wouldn't be surprised if they changed it for the final episode of this arc. All Might they is don't. conveniently <laughs> on his own layer behind the dust, so it wouldn't be at all difficult to swap him out for his weaker form if the animators want to deliver one last gut punch before the Oak I'd rather, changes. I'm glad they didn't. But hey, that's just a theory. A, a film, film theory. <laughs> show. It is amazing how Bones manages to keep raising the bar with each six The OPs are amazing, aren't they? I love my Twice hero now, I found myself thinking, well, it's all downhill from here, and been swiftly proven wrong, and I can't wait to see what they bring out for the second core of this season. It's Having a decent opening. and become a filthy manga-reading degenerate, I can say with certainty that the next arc will give them a lot to work with. Cool. If you want to see more of me covering Hiroaka and also a bunch of other anime, because there are so many good anime this season, right. holy crap, then make sure to subscribe to Mother's Basement and turn on notifications to catch every video that I put out. And if you feel like supporting me a little more, I have a YouTube sponsorship button now that you can click, or you can support me on Patreon. I'm Jeff Thu, professional shitbag, signing out from my Mother's Basement. Sweet. That was awesome. Do you know, I love, I love my Hero Academia so much. Like, I love it. And then it really winds me up. I've got, like, my, my really close friends, who I don't see very often. We have, like, a WhatsApp chat. And I'm like, right, watch My Hero Academia. They're like, why? And it's like, because it's amazing. And they just won't give it a chance. They will not. I just don't know what I'm meant to do to get them to watch My Hero Academia. It's just, I just, ah, it's so uplifting and cool. And just like, it makes you feel good every episode. I I love it. Like, every episode's kind of like a bit of an adrenaline rush for me. Like, it's just like, ah, new. And the, uh, the first episode of the second half of the season uh, is what I'm up to at the point of the, me recording this. I'm a little, like, I schedule these a little bit ahead so I can get two, two videos up a day for you guys. Um, I really liked it. Uh, I like how just simple things they make really epic. Like Deku learning to uh, do something different instead of using his fists when he, like, realises... Spoilers, sorry. When he realises he can use his feet and he reinforces, like, his arms and his feet to uh, with his suit now. I was just like, that's boss! So simple, I was like, so cool. Um, so anyway, yeah, that was awesome. I love it. I love that OP. I love the song. I keep my ideals up there. Do, do. Ah, it just stays in my head all day. It's going to be in my head all day now. But anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave comments down below. Let me know what I should watch and discuss in future videos. And I'll see you guys. It's all of you guys next time.